Hey guys, Steve here from Blossom Racing, coming to you with another video. Today's video, we're going to take apart a Super Rhino 2 engine. Um, to get started, uh, the very first thing that we usually do is I want to make sure that both valves are completely closed. So I'll take the crank and, and turn it until I make sure that the uh, valves are closed. Now on this particular motor, uh, we are dealing with a broken crank. As you can see, I can grab one side and turn the other side independently. So, uh, so we're gonna dive right into it. I'm gonna kind of show you uh, my process of taking one of these uh, completely apart. So let's dive right into it. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, pop the uh, starter nut off. So I can get down at the flywheel. And then I take an old beat up uh, starter nut, screw it on there, take my big hammer, put a little pressure on the back side of that flywheel. And then you just whack that a couple times. I'm not too worried about this one. Uh, the crank in this is broke, so um, it's not like we're gonna do any damage to it. Uh, pull the uh, flywheel off. Remove the key out of the flywheel so that I can reinstall it later. All right, and then I move to the uh, head bolts. Take all nine of those out. Then all these head studs that are in here don't have an Allen in them. So I have this uh, removal, this head stud removal tool that basically grabs on to the outside of it. Just put it on my tool. And out they come. So as you see, I had uh, one right here that didn't want to come out. Now this is a trick. This is one of our uh, little ancient Chinese secrets. So don't share this with anyone. You got like a head stud right there and it wouldn't come out with the tool. Just take your hammer, whack it a kind of a, not too bad. Once you whack it, it, it jars it enough to release it, and out she comes. All right, now there's, there's a few different ways to remove the head off of these. Um, usually on the rhinos, these uh, bolts that hold on to your evac system we actually take them and drill them all the way through the head so that you could take a quarter 20 bolt, screw it in there, and it'll push the head off. Um, there's another way. Uh, in the beginning, you saw that I made sure that both valves are closed. If they're not closed and you got one up and you whack this head, uh, you got a chance of hitting that valve and bending it. So I always make sure that my valves are down all the way. Uh, take, take my big rubber mallet and hit it on the side and it kind of just slides right off just like that. Um, if you can't get it that way because sometimes the glue is just uh, fresh, set up too hard and, uh, and you can't do that, that's when you take your uh, quarter 20 bolt, go down through the head, it'll hit on the head gasket, pushes the head up, and then you can remove it that way. Uh, next part, I just take the uh, head gasket off. Now, sometimes on these head gaskets, 
you can reuse them. Uh, this one's not too bad. I, it did get bent up a little bit. Um, so what I'll do with this one is probably straighten it back out, send it back to the customer as a backup one, just in case the, uh, something happens to the new one. So. All right. Next thing, I'm going to uh, take the coil off. Um, the main boss bolts I'm going to take out, the valve cover. The uh, reason why I do this way is because the uh, heads, head bolts, the Allens, are all the same size. So to make it quicker, I just utilize the, the smaller one and do it all at the same time. So... Coils off, bolts for the main boss sleeve are out. Valve cover. Now on the last bolt, we drill and tap a quarter 20 hole in there so that I can screw that bolt right back in. And as you can see, it pushes the valve cover right off. Makes it a lot easier, that way you're not getting in there with a screwdriver to pry it off. All right, so there's all the uh, 1024 bolts off. Now I'm gonna move to the quarter 20s. Um, just all the intake bolts were left in this motor, so We'll just pop those all out of the way. Exhaust gasket's still on. Just pop that off real quick. remove the fill plugs you got the front fill plug the oil sight tube we're going to replace that with new line so we'll remove that and they left the belt guard bolts in so I'll pop those out real quick so they're not in my way. And then we'll move right into the side cover bolts. came out now to get the side cover to break loose most of the time I'll tap on this side of the crank and it'll pop that cover off but this motor I know has a broken crank in it so that is not going to work so on all of our motors we take and drill two 1024 holes on the side cover and the reason for that is so that we can push it off without driving a screwdriver in here and marring up your case so just simple screws screw them right in and as you can see pulls the side cover Right off. There's your side cover. And there is your broken crank. Ripped right off at the journal on the PTO side. The rod is still connected inside if you can see that rod is still connected in there so 
piston still goes up and down, but won't go anywhere. All right. Let's see if we can get the cam out of here. Cam's going to give me a little problem. So, get a tool in here and see if we can't persuade it to come out. There it is. So, as you can see on this cam, it did take a hit right here in the center on both sides of it. Um, so it whacked the uh, rod or the, um, yeah, the rod uh, pretty hard right there in the center. All right, lifters. Lifters look pretty marred up. So this motor's probably gonna get new lifters, new cam. Everything's gonna be new inside. All right. We get the uh, rod bolts loose. Hold on one second. Got my little electric gun. cap you can see this is a side where the crank broke when it broke it just dug it all out this side right here if you can see that it dug out a lot of material on the rod cap right there and that's uh, what hit the cam so cam took a pretty big hit piston pull the piston out I just always like to look at the pistons the ring package uh, make sure that uh, the ring didn't break. Make sure everything's good there. Look at the piston. Looking for any cracks. Rod again. Upper part of the rod on the journal uh, has material ripped out of it right there. Um, so that's where it hit the cam. Took a pretty big whack. All right. Next part. Pull the other side of the crank out. And then... We go over to the mag seal, pull that out, come in here, take the bearing out. And the reason why I took those uh, bolts out of the main boss is so that the whole boss comes out with it at once. Pop that out. Get my side cover in my vise. Same thing. Pull the seal out of that. I'm going to pop the crank bearing out. Bearing came out. to take the cam bearings out. This is my little slide hammer tool. This is how I take my cam bearings out. Boom, there's one. Then I come over here to the side cover. Work it out. Boom, it's out. Then I take the side cover over to the parts washer. Put that in there. Let me come back to the motor and I got to take the valve springs out. Uh, one of my last caps fell off on the exhaust side. So I just take that off and I got a little plastic bag here that I set here somewhere a minute ago that miraculously just disappeared on me. So I'll have to find me another uh, plastic bag. All right, uh, so this is our valve spring compressor tool. 
Uh, we got it from JR. We used to use a, um, a real flimsy style, and man, was that a pain in the butt. So when you would put it in on the valve springs, you had to constantly hold it. Otherwise, your tool would literally go flying across the room. So we got this, and it's probably one of the best investments that we ever made. So very, very sturdy, very strong tool. They did a great job building it. So as you see, you just put it on the top of the valve. A little plastic nylon piece sits right on top of the valve. Fingers goes down, grabs a hold of the bottom of the valve spring, turn it, compresses it. Take my magnet, I come in here, pull off the keepers, set these over here, and then release the valve spring tool, hop over onto the exhaust spring, do the same thing, tighten it down until you can get to the keepers, come in here with a magnet, pulls them both off. And release that. Pull both valves out. Come in here after my valve springs, pop those out with the uppers. This motor is going to get new valve springs. We always put new valve springs in every motor on a basic freshen up. Take the other one out, use my lash cap for the intake side. Take a little paint marker and I always mark mine. Usually I'll mark my uh, lifters as well, intake and exhaust. I didn't on this one just because I know I'm gonna replace them because of the uh, uh, parts failure that this motor had inside. Uh, the crank, you know, that broke on this thing. Let's see here. It's a 2012 crank. Uh, it was manufactured 912 of 2012. So uh, they got quite a few years out of this crank, so. Time for a new one. So basically on completely disassembling a motor, that is um, what we do. Uh, now I'm gonna take this motor, put it in the parts washer, uh, let it soak for a while, um, go through it, clean all the parts up. The motor will then go over uh, onto another bench uh, where it's gonna be bored and honed. Uh, valve job will be done. Um, then it'll come over on the assembly table where uh, we will grab a hold of it and throw it on our bench and assemble the whole motor. So hopefully the, this video helped you guys out on taking apart one of these things and uh, we'll see you guys next time.